Hi, in this lecture I'm going to talk about the four main mathematical objects we'll encounter throughout this course and really in machine learning and linear algebra in general, which are scalars, vectors, matrices, and tensors. This goes with chapter 2.1 of the deep learning textbook that this course is accompanied with, so I suggest you read that after watching this lecture. Okay, so let's start off with the simplest one here, which is scalars. So, scalars. Scalars. Scalars are essentially just single numbers. Uh, whenever you see scalar, read it as single number. Uh, these other three can be thought of as just groups of single numbers, ergo groups of scalars. So, yeah, so scalars, so let's give some examples. So, 5 is a scalar, negative 21 is a scalar, 1005 is a scalar, um, 3 over 4, 0 0.1, and even irrational numbers like pi are scalars. Really, just any single number. But that's not all. What I mainly want to talk about with scalars is how we can know if a variable, if stated somewhere in a textbook or somewhere on my whiteboard throughout this course, is a variable or some other mathematical object, like a vector. Well, generally, we represent uh, uh, scalars, scalar variables, with some lowercase letter. Like x is kind of the default go-to. So x, because it's lowercase and not bolded, so it's like light text, x is going to be a scalar. All right. So we got x, great. Um, so great, so we got our x, but often we'll see a little part added onto the end, something that looks like this. And that happens when we define a variable for the first time. And that's how we rigorously mathematically define a variable. What this basically means is that we're just saying that this variable x has to be a real number. But they are, there are non-real numbers. So what we're saying here is that x basically has to be a member, that's what the e says, an element of the set of real numbers. So we kind of have to narrow down, at least to that, when you create a variable, um, what set of numbers it comes from. And I'm just explaining this because this is something that you'll see throughout this textbook and throughout this course. So this basically means that when you declare x, you kind of say which set it comes from. Here it's a real numbers, which is by far the most common. It basically means any number that you can put from a number line from negative infinity to positive infinity. But you'll see other variations as well. You'll see uh, x has to be a member of the uh, set of integers, which is represented with a z. And then sometimes you'll see x has to be a part of the set of natural numbers which is n, which is simply just counting numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to mention um, with that, and that's how you kind of set a variable, and you know a variable is a scalar if it's a lowercase letter. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. Let's change colors maybe, uh, which is vectors. And vectors are essentially just lists of scalars. Essentially just lists of scalars. So let's give an example, something like 3, 4, 5 is a vector, or something like 2, 1 is a vector. We call this a three-dimensional vector, and we call this a two-dimensional vector. And you'll see why, and I'll, I'll tell you right now. Although we can represent vectors as just lists of numbers, so you can think of an n-dimensional vector, again, we'll say dimensional soon, um, we can say an n-dimensional vector has n elements and just a list of n numbers. But it's a little more than that. We can understand vectors geometrically in a way that we'll use throughout this course. And you can understand vectors to represent some, some coordinate in space, some point in space. For example, here with 2, 1, we can represent this, we can represent this as a point in two-dimensional Cartesian space. So say we have a Cartesian plane here. We can represent this 2, 1, so let's index our, our, our axes here, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. We can understand this vector 2, 1 to correspond to a point at x equals 2 and y equals 1. So right here. So this vector is the same thing as this point, essentially. And what you might often see, especially in physics, but in this course as well you'll see it, is that this point we often represent it with an arrow from the origin going to that point. Something like that. Great. So that's a geometric understanding of what a vector is, and you can understand why we call it a two-dimensional vector in this case, because it's a point in two-dimensional space. It describes something in two-dimensional space. Furthermore, in three-dimensional space, I think you can kind of see where this, uh, where this goes. In three-dimensional space, that three-dimensional vector uh, tells you some point in three-dimensional space. So that's going to be something like this. So you have your x here, your y here, and your z here now. 
and this 3, 4, 5 represents some point at x equals 3, so let's say maybe here, and then y equals 4, and z equals 5, so some point maybe up here, and that is equivalent to, uh, to your vector 3, 4, 5, is that point at x equals 3, y equals 4, and z equals 5. And again, you can use an arrow from the origin to represent that. Okay, so that's a geometric intuition with vectors, but after we're done that, how can we state um, variables that are vectors? Because remember that we used lowercase letters for scalars. Well, for vectors, if you want to state some really um, default, I guess, uh, some really uh, some some variable, some vector which uh, some vector which is a variable, uh, some very general. That was the word I was some very general uh, vector which is has n elements in it, n numbers in it. We call it an n-dimensional vector, and we denote it with some x1, x2, up to xn. Right. So that that number in the subscript represents which element is in it is which element it is in this variable vector. And overall, we'll call this entire variable vector x. But you might remember, we didn't we use lowercase letters and scalars? Well, the difference here is that we make this a bold x, a bold face x. And sometimes it's hard to write bold face either when you're writing on paper or on a whiteboard. So often x with a little arrows on top of it is used. Or sometimes you just say x and then you use context clues. That's really what's mostly going to be, is that's just going to be context clues to know if something's a, very, a vector or a scalar. It really doesn't appear as a problem too much. So similar with the other one where we had to, de we had to declare uh, which set of numbers our scalar came from, we have to declare which set of numbers all the elements in our vector come from. And how we do this is we do a very similar thing. So if this variable vector x, we want to say that all these elements x1, x2, up to xn are all real numbers, we would say that x, with a bold face this time, is going to be an element of the real numbers similarly. But this time we take it to the nth power, where n is uh, the amount of elements in this vector. And the reason for this is under, can be understood with something called a uh, Cartesian product, which is quickly mentioned in the, in the text. So I want to provide a bit of intuition for that, but it takes a bit while and it'll kind of take us off on the side on a little adventure for something that's not too important. Uh, but if you want the intuition as to why we take r to the nth power, where this notation comes from, I'll just write on the screen, I'll paste a big explanation. You can pause and read it. So right here, if you want to pause and read that stuff. Okay. Now that we're done with that, um, that's, if you didn't read that, that's just how we represent some n-dimensional vector and how we declare it as a real number. And similarly, we can say this is, uh, you know, an integer if we wanted to, or a natural number, it doesn't matter. Um, but that's how we declare a vector, how we define a vector as well. All right, great. So we got vectors. Uh, any more things with vectors? I guess one more thing with vectors is how we index into vectors. So say we had some vector x, let's take this x again, and say you wanted, specifically you wanted the second element, you would use x2, right, like that. You would use x2 to denote the second element more painfully, and this is kind of a, um, a weird way to do it, but it is the way. If you wanted, say, specific elements like 1, 3, and 5 from a vector, you would have to create a separate set, so let's call that s, which contains 1, 3, and 5, and then you'd basically index x to that set. So that basically that xs is equal to x1, x3, and x5. One thing, last thing to cover in indexing is sometimes, say, if we want the scenario where we want every element in this vector except for the first, third, and fifth elements, then we would put a minus sign from the s to take the complement of that set. So then we, this would become x, x2, x4, x6, etc. up to xn. And then finally, similarly, if you want to take, uh, if you want just like every number, x, every element in this vector except for the first element, we would do minus 1 because you're kind of taking the complement of 1, which is every number except for 1. Great. Okay, so that's how you index into a vector, which we're going to do all the time. So that's vectors. So now we're going to basically just expand this by kind of adding columns. We're going to just put a bunch of vectors together, and then we're going to get something called a matrix. And matrix, I'm just going to see which color should I use for this. Let's use a kind of a purplish color. So matrices, so matrices is just plural of matrix. So matrices, matrix, oh, that's a nice color, matrices. So basically matrices are just boxes of numbers you can think of them as. So like 3, 4, 6, 2, 1, 1 is a matrix. Or you can have square matrices, 2, 2, 1, 3. 
etc. I think you get the point, and these can be any size you want. You can actually think of vectors as a subset of matrices, because you can think of vectors as just what we call a 3 by 1 vector, 3 rows and 1 column. These similarly, this would be a 2 by 3 matrix, and this would be a 2 by 2 matrix. So you say the rows first and then the columns, 2 by 3. In general, if you wanted to state some um, matrix that was a variable, so uh, a variable matrix, so let's say if you wanted to make some very general matrix that is just variables, this might look a little daunting at first, but I'll explain it. Uh, 1, uh, n, and then it's going to be uh, 2, 1, a, 2, 2, and then give me a second here, 2, n, and then we're going to go here, it's going to be a, m, 1, a, m, 2, and it's going to become a, m, n. Okay, so this might be a lot, but this is how we represent a general matrix, and let's call this a. Before I go on to describe what these little numbers are, basically with vectors and scalar, we use uses, uh, we used lowercase letters. Um, with matrices, we usually use an uppercase. Well, we do use an uppercase letter to denote uh, variable matrices. In this case, the default is usually A as opposed to X. So this means some uh, general default, some general uh, variable matrix. So what do these numbers mean? Well, basically each of this, so this is 1, 1, 1, 2. So it's not 11 and 12, it's 1, 1, 1, 2 and 1n. So generally we say some matrix is m by n, where m is the amount of rows and n is the amount of columns. So notice here that this first uh, first variable can be indexed a11. So if we wanted the first, if we want the element in the first row in the first column, we'd index to this one, which would be a11. Sometimes we do a common comma in between them, a11, but often we just don't. Alright, so a11 is the first row, first column. So then if you wanted the one in the first row and second column, we would say A1, 2, which is this point here, or A1, 2, which is this point here. And since N is going to be the amount of columns, A1, N is going to be the one uh, still in the first row, but it's going to be at the very end, um, at the very end, uh, very last column. So you can kind of understand how this goes. And this is some M by N matrix. And if you want to define this general matrix here, you would say that A, and similar to the other ones, if you want to say that everything here is going to be a real number, you would declare it similarly as real numbers, and then you would put it to the power of M by N, where M is the amount of rows and N is the amount of columns. So this is how you declare some uh, matrix, uh, how you define some variable matrix. And this is what it means here. So these dots obviously mean that to keep things um, general, I've made it so that there can be any amount of numbers in between here and uh, 1n. So this is how we make some variable matrix. Uh, getting used to the notation can be a little difficult at first, but it gets easy quickly. And this is going to really be the star of our show over the next few lectures. We're going to be talking tons about matrices and vectors. And yeah, so just really important to kind of get this notation down. So of course, the bottom row, bottom column is some a, m, n, where m is the amount of rows and n is the amount of columns, because that's just, all right, that's how it works. All right, so sure, that should make sense. All right. I don't know why I'm raising this. We actually don't really need to raise this. We can keep this right here. So this is some A11, A12. All right, so the last one I'm going to talk about is pretty quick because it's just a quick extension on matrices, and that's tensors. So you can think of tensors as just as kind of adding more layers to a matrix. So you can think of turning this from just a square to a cube of numbers like this. And you can think of basically what we're going to get is just we're going to take this M by N matrix and we're going to stack it on top of other M by N matrices and then now you'll get maybe some m by n by k uh, tensor, where you have k uh, layers of m by n matrices stacked on top of each other. So if we had maybe k equals 3, then we'd have another one here. So you'd have to have some other one, and then another one here. And then we have another thing here. So you're thinking of stacking three, um, three matrices on top of each other, pretty much. Um, so the thing is now is that the only changes we need more numbers to index because we have more kind of axes to index on. So these a11, a12, a1n would have to become a um, a111 and then a112. So you'd put the layer number first, and then you'd put the um, row in the column. But it does vary by author, uh, so it, it depends really. But you can have a1 by one. So it's something at the last row last column in the last 
in the last kind of layer of this tensor would be something where A and then you'd have K, M, N, right? Where K is the amount of layers, N is the amount of um, layers, N is the amount of columns, and M is the amount of rows. So now you need three uh, letters to, um, to index into it. So then generally you declare them similarly, and you still use an uppercase A, because they're pretty similar to matrices. And then you'd define that as some real number, and then you'd have to use these three numbers now. So you have to say K, M, N. Great, so that's a, that's a tensor generally. So that's about it. That's all I wanted to cover here. And note, no, note that tensors can be more dimensional. You can have a six-dimensional tensor, and then you just have to use six different um, index numbers to know where it is, but that's kind of hard to visualize. And really at that point, you're just kind of thinking of, of, of just numbers inside of other groups of numbers inside of other groups of numbers, and it doesn't really make sense to think of them geometrically anymore. Um, but we're mostly going to be dealing with just matrices and vectors and sometimes tensors. So it's good to know still, and um, yeah, it'll come up. Anyways, uh, hopefully this made sense. I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.